In this exercise, we'll complete the next item in our programming to-do list, generating a random number to use as the target value. We'll also add multiple rounds to the game and show you how to write your own methods along the way. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a target value and setting it to a random number. First thing we're going to need is a variable to store the target variable. So we'll type in verify variable, the name is target value, and put a colon because we'll set the type to an int and set the default to zero. Now in view did load, we're going to set it to a random value. So we'll just say target value equals, and then we're going to use a special function called arc for random uniform. What this function does is it gives you a random number between zero and up to, but not including whatever value you pass in here. So if we type in 100, it would go from zero all the way up to 99. Of course, we need to convert this. This is a uint32, which is a different type. We want this to be an int, and the way you convert that is you put int, and in parentheses, you put that value. So now we're getting a number from zero to 99. That's not quite what we want, right? For this app, we want one to 100. So to fix that, we'll just say one plus that value. Now let's display this value. So down here in show alert, I want to print out the value of the slider and I also want to print out the target value. So you can actually combine two strings together by simply using plus. And below I'll just start typing my second string, but I want it to be on a new line. So there's a special shortcut for making a new line in Swift, it's just slash n. And then we'll say the target value is, and we want the target value to appear here. Remember, we just use this special keyword to put whatever's in, in uh, the parentheses here inside this string, and we'll put in target value. Okay, let me run that. I can now tap the button, and it says the target value is 59, which is a random number that it generated from one to 100. However, if I tap the button again, it still shows the same random value of 59. That's because we only generate the random number once when the view controller first loads. We actually want to generate a new random value every time the user makes a guess. And to do that, we're going to implement rounds into the game. But first, let me explain how rounds should work. Here's how the game should work. In this game, each guess is a round. Whenever the user makes a guess, you should calculate the points for this round and add it to the total score. Then you should increment the round number, reset the slider, generate a new target value, rinse, and repeat. Whenever you find yourself thinking, at this point, the app should do such and such, that usually means it's a good time to write your own method. That way the method can contain all of that logic in a self-contained unit. Let's try this out. Let's create a new method to store all the code necessary to start a new round. It doesn't matter where you put this, you can order your methods wherever you like, but I usually like to keep view did load at the very top, so I'll just put it underneath there. So we'll make a new method starting with the keyword func, and we'll give the name of the method, which we're gonna call start new round. Then we put in two parentheses, it doesn't take any parameters, and a opening curly brace and a closed curly brace. Inside here, we put any instructions we want to execute to start a new round one at a time. The first thing we'll do is we'll copy this line of code that we added earlier to set the target value. And now we'll set the current value equal to 50, and we'll set the slider's value to the current value. But remember, this won't work because current value is an integer and the slider.value is a float. Remember, the way we convert from one to another is we just type in what we want to convert to and put the other value in parentheses. Okay, now that we have this method, we want to delete this line that we added earlier, and instead we want to call our new start new round method. So we just call start new round with two parentheses to call that method. And the other time we want to start a new round is after the user makes a guess. So at the very end of show alert, We'll just type in start new round. That's it. Now I'll build and run. And I'll pick a random thing, hit, hit me. It says the target value is 43. If I type hit me again, it now says the target value is 29. So it's generating a random number for me each round. Awesome. Up until now, your methods have been called for you by UIKit when something of interest happens. For example, view did load is called when your app first loads its view controller. It's also possible to call methods directly like you're doing here. You're sending a message from one method in the object to another method in the same object. In this case, the view controller calls the start new round method on itself 
to start a new round. The iPhone switches execution over to the start new round method, executes the lines one by one, and then jumps back to the calling method. Sometimes you may see method calls written like this. This does the exact same thing as start new round without the self. Remember how I said the view controller sends messages to itself? Well, that's what self means. To call a method on an object, you typically write things in this format. The receiver is the object you're sending the message to. If you're sending messages to yourself, then the receiver is self but you can leave this special keyword out in most cases. Actually, you've already called several methods like this in your app already, such as when you call the add action method on the alert control. When you write code in Swift, a lot of what you'll be doing is calling methods on objects because that is how objects in Swift communicate. I hope you can see the advantage of putting all of the code to start a new round into its own method. If you didn't, your code would look something like this. Do you see how we have the same repeated lines in both of these methods? The problem is later on, if we decide we want to change this logic and we go back and change it in one spot, we'd have to remember to change it in the other spot as well. And if you have a lot of this going on, and if it's been a while you've looked in the app, it's very easy to forget this. Code duplication is a big source of bugs. So whenever you find yourself writing the same line of code in multiple places, remember the rule, don't repeat yourself, and consider putting that code into a method instead.